Hello and welcome to Catch More Media. In this week's show, we get out on the bank with Alan Scothorn for a masterclass in slider fishing. He explains the tackle, rigs and bait you need to get the most out of slider fishing for skimmers. The first thing that you do when you arrive on the bank is mix your ground bait, unless you can pre-mix it at home. Often when we fish world championships, ground baits mix four or five hours before the event actually starts. And this is good because all the ground bait particles take on the water really well. So there's very few um, bits of the ground bait that will float up off the bottom. It's important to wet your ground bait up well before you start to use it. So this is why I said as soon as you arrive on the bank, look at mixing your ground bait. The first thing I'm going to do today is I'm using a... A, a very very simple mix of lake and lime. It's a mix that is fantastic for skimmers on these type of lakes. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the lime and run it through the riddle. And this just breaks down any lumps that's in the lime. So this I just shove through the, the riddle. It is a very very fine mix anyway lime, but just removing them odd lumps is, is good for the ground bait. So both bags of census T80 some, I'm just going to run through the riddle. That then I can put to one side and I can look at mixing the ground bait that I'm going to add to this lime. I'll just tap them, you can see there were next to no particles come off that. So that's just four kilos of riddle lean. The next thing to do is to prepare the ground bait. And I'm using the, the Census Lake 3000. And Census Lake is, is a great ground bait for using for skimmers. I'm just going to add two bags of lake to a bucket. Then I'm also going to add some brown crumb as well. Just about half a bag of brown crumb. That's a kilo bag, so I'm just adding half of that to my mix. Brown crumb, as I've said, I always use in the mixes that I, I use because it's a very, very good food value to the ground bait. So to that now, I'm just going to add the water. Now most of the time we use drills and whisks to mix the ground bait because it, it separates the ground bait well and gets the particles well wetted up. So I'm just going to add water to that. You can smell that ground bait. Lake has a, a real strong smell to it. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more water to that until I get it to the right consistency. It's always better to use quite a big bucket for this because the, the whisk works well in the bottom and you get all the, the ground bait well wetted. Once the ground bait's wetted up so it's starting to stick like that, I'm just going to leave it to one side while I finish off rigging up. Just probably leave it for half an hour for it to take on the, the water that I've added. Once the ground bait started to take on that water, I'll be able to add more water and get it to the perfect consistency that I want for today to add the lean to it. I've left this ground bait to settle now for about half an hour. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it so I can just get it exactly to the consistency that I want. <laughs> When you're adding lime to ground bait, the ground bait needs to be wetted up quite a lot. But not, not made into a pudding, but, but all the particles very wet.
And as you can see, that's that's well wetted. All the particles now have swollen up, and the ground bait is ready to add the lean to it. Now, what I'm going to do, I want a 50-50 mix of Census 3000 Lake and the Tiedison mixed together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure out from that the lean and the, the ground bait into another bucket, exactly what I want, so it's 50-50. Using just a, a litre measure is probably the best way to do it. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to measure out three litres of ground bait and then add three litres of lean to that. So I know that the, the mix is 50-50. Now this is what I'm going to use for the initial start to the session. This is going to be the ground bait that I introduce. And once this is whisked together, I'll just stick these two ground baits to the one side. Put this back into the big bucket to mix it together. Right, once this is whisked together, what you've got now is the, your lake and lean that will stick so you can add your particles to it. If it's not quite binding as you want it, the best way to add water to it, that just wants wetting up still a little bit, is to use an atomizer. And using an atomizer with the just lake water in it, you can spray the actual lean and ground bait and just whisk it gently. If you were to add water to it, just straight out of a a tub what had happened you'd get too much water in areas of the ground bait and it would make it not so nice but by adding the water with a an atomizer you can get the right consistency you want <laughs> now that's just starting to stick nice now when that enters the water because i'm fishing a, a swim that's about three meters deep once that enters the water it'll break almost on impact so what you can do you can create an area to fish over this is great for when you're first feeding at the start but once you've introduced that initial area of feed I'll probably feed 20 to 25 ant sized balls of, of lake and lean into the swim but once you've introduced that the worst thing you can do then is use this as the top-up mix and when I explain to you the reason why, you'll understand why. With skimmers, once they're on the bottom, once the initial goes in, they'll come to the bait on the bottom because everything settles on the bottom. But then when you start to top up, if you were to use this as it was, breaking on the surface, what you'd do is produce a cloud that goes down over the top of the ground baited area. And by producing a cloud above, what you do, you draw the fish up. And this is the worst thing you can do because once they've come up off the bottom and there's nothing to eat, they'll swim away. You want to keep them fish on the bottom. So now what I'll do, I'll show you how to mix the ground bait so you can put a hard ball onto the bottom when, so you can keep the fish down where you want to catch them. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make. They use lake and lean, but then they top up too soft with the, the actual ground bait that they use after the initial start. So let's have a look at the next step, the ground bait for topping up. Right, that's the, the ground bait, the Census Lake 3000 and Terre de Somme lean added together. And you can see that will squeeze easily into a ball to introduce the initial feed. So that's the initial feed where I'm going to feed at the start of the session to create the area. The next thing is then to create the top up mix. So when I feed after, this mix wants to go in quite hard. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to now add a bag of double lean standard. Now this is normal lean, it's the normal Terre de Somme that's already got grey lean added to it. So it's a lot stickier lean. And I want to make this where the ground bait goes in hard. So that's why I'm going to use the, the standard double lean. So once again, I'm just going to get 
a riddle. Shove that bag through a riddle. Now I want about four litres of top-up mix. So once I've shoved that through the riddle again, just to remove any lumps, I can then again measure out what I want. There should be around about two litres of double lean, which that's what there is. Once that's all put together, there's about two litres. So to that then, I can add two litres of the remaining ground bait. Now once that's added, I can then whisk it together. Because the top-up mix has got the, the double lean in it, this will start to stick up more than what the initial will. So again, just spraying the ingredients up and whisking it together. As you whisk in this, it'll start to ball up and make slightly bigger balls. As you can see, as I said, it starts to ball up into balls. That's when it's starting to come right. And because it's got the, the grey lean added as well, you can now make a ball much harder than what you can make with the initial where I'm going to feed. So that'll go in, clunk straight down to the bottom, and that's what I want to do. If I were to start feeding this during the session, all I'd do, I'd, I'd suck the fish up off the bottom and that would make, make it so the fish swam away. I've experienced this several times. I can once remember fishing in Ireland and fishing a competition and I'd fed an initial ground bait at the start and I was catching skimmers really well. And just for a, a brief moment, I'd gone into my double lean mix to feed um, again during the session and it had just dried out a little bit and I threw a couple of balls in that just broke on the surface and immediately the fish came off the bottom and I lost the fish for about 20-25 minutes. So that tells you how important it is once you top up to top up with a harder, much harder ground bait over the initial area. Now because today I'm fishing for skimmers I'm going to be quite selective on the baits that I'm going to use. In this venue there's fish sort of from this size up to maybe maybe a kilo and because the fish are quite small I'm not going to use casters in the mix. Casters, one problem when you're using lean and, and lake mix together, if you add casters to it it tends, the casters, because I want to squeeze the balls quite hard you can tend a tendency to break the casters. I'd rather use baits that's, that's dead also because I'm feeding initially everything that I'm going to add to the ground bait is dead I'm going to add some dead maggots, some dead pinkies, and also some joker. Right, I mean, this joker is actually dead as well. This has just come out of the freezer. When I, when I go fishing with bloodworm and joker, any joker that I have spare, I tend to separate it with just a, either maize or a fine ground bait and then put it in the freezer. And once it comes out, it breaks down quite easily, so you can add it to the ground bait. And because it's dead, it's not active, it stays on the bottom, and the skimmers like to, to swim over the, the dead baits. So what I'm going to do, I, I always measure everything out. And simply I'm going to measure out, I'm just going to measure out about 150 mil of pinkies. Right, these are dead pinkies. So I'm just going to measure them out and put that into the, into the mix. The next thing, because this is an initial, I'm going to put in quite a bit of joker. I'm going to put a 250ml pot of joker into the mix as well. And then also about 100ml of dead maggots. 
Now if I were fishing for bigger fish, like you know the bigger size bream, three and four pound size fish, I'd probably want to add casters and I'd want to add worms also. The problem with chopped worms, once you chop the worms up, if you don't dry them very well, it can spoil the ground bait. But if I were fishing for big fish, I'd add worms to the mix as well. I'd chop them really fine and I'd wring them out through a towel to add to the mix. But today, just because I'm fishing for skimmers, I've added the joker, 250 mil, I've added some maggots and I've added some pinkies. So once that's all mixed in to the initial, I can then start to ball that up. And all I'm going to do, because I'm firing it in with a catapult, right, once that's mixed in really well, I can then start to ball it up. And every ball has to be exactly the same size. So I'm quite meticulous at making the balls up for, for feeding on the, the slider line. I like the balls to be all exactly the same size. And then I use a catapult that at full stretch will fire the ground bait and leam exactly the distance I want it. And I'm going to fish around about 40 turns out from the bank. So now that's mixed in, what I'll do, I'll start to ball up probably about 25 balls. Now I make them all that shape and all that size. You can see the bait in that. There's not a lot of bait, it's just each ball's probably got you know, a nice amount of joker in and then the dead maggots and pinkies. Perfect for the skimmers. If you had too much bait when skimmers are the target, of, often this is detrimental. You don't want a lot of bait in the initial. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to make 25 balls up to fire in with the initial. Each ball I'm very careful to make exactly the same size. And you can see once everything is balled up, the balls are the same size. So they'll travel the same distance. So that's the initial one I'm going to introduce. Now I also add the, the particles to the top up. Now all I'm going to add to the top up is just 150 mil of the frozen joker and about 100 mil of dead maggots, only a small amount of bait and 100 mil of the pinkies. Right, and once this is whisked in into the actual top up you'll be amazed how little I'm going to top up with because the skimmers the they tend not to want a lot of bait and of course I've already said to you that I want these balls to go in really hard and if you add too much bait to lake and lean what tends to happen it tends to break as well so I don't want too much bait in this so once I've really got that spread through the, the mix, you can see now how much that starts to bind. You can really put in a very, very hard ball with that mix, with the, the, double, the double lean with the grey lean in it and the lake. You can really put in a rock hard ball to keep them fish on the bottom. I mean, where I'm fishing is about three metres deep and that wants to travel all the way to the bottom before it breaks up. You can see the difference in that. Right, so now I'm going to get, get on the peg and start and feed the initial and then we'll see how the session goes. Slider fishing is a great way to fish at distance. Using a sliding float that runs up the line up to a stop knot allows you to present a bait very well even when there's some pull on the water because you, you slide in a bulk down the line which keeps your float more steady. If you were to just fish a fixed waggler even though here where I'm fishing I could manage to fish a fixed waggler it's probably about three meters deep. A slider still gives you the benefit to control the hook bait better so you get more bites. So I just want to explain the equipment that I'm using. I'm using a, a Drennan Acolyte 14 foot ultra rod. Now this is a quite a Meller action. If I were using, today I'm using a four, a four swan shot size slider. If I were using a, a six swan, a, a slightly bigger float, 
I'd use the plus rod. They do a, an Acolyte Plus, which is slightly stiffer. But this rod casts a four swan or a five swan quite easily. And of course, it's quite a mellow action for catching skimmers. The hook I'm using, I'm using just a, a B560, a Camasan B560 size 18, which is perfect for catching skimmers of all sizes. Even a bream of four pound, you'd land quite comfortably on that hook. The hook length is 105 suplex, fluorocarbon suplex, which is about probably 10 inches long. Right, the, above the hook length, I've got a swivel, which if you're fishing with multiple baits, like bunches of bloodworm, two maggots, double caster, baits like this, it takes the spin out of the hook so you don't get any spinning of the hook length. Above that, the main line that I'm using, this is very important. If you're fishing with a sliding float, you need to fish with O20 or O23 line. If you use less than O20, what happens as you get some spin of the line and it causes tangles. Also, the fact that I'm using quite big shot on the line as well, you can nip them shot quite tight in place. You don't want any gaps where the shot are, because that again will cause tangles. So the main line is quite important. I'm just using a Drennan new float fish line in O20. O20 is about five pound. If I were using a, a bigger flow to six one, I'd step up to the O23, which is the six pound version. Above the swivel, I've got three number eights as a little block, just about, I don't know, 30, 40 centimetres above that swivel. And then above that, again, another 30 to 40 centimetres above that block, I've got the line of shot. Now, when I'm fishing with a slider, I always fish with anchor shot because you can actually remove the shot very easily. And if I just stick the, my thumbnail in the shot, I can remove that three swan shot size shot very, very easily off the line. When I'm plumbing up, this allows me to remove the shot and place a plummet on the hook. And when you're fishing for skimmers up to sort of a pound, pound and a half in weight, it's important not to fish with too much line on the bottom. So I like to fish with this principle because I can take off the shot, add a plummet to the hook and plumb up perfectly dead depth and just add enough so I know I'm only two or three inches on the bottom. The float I'm using is a, a DJK slider which is loaded in the base of the float. This is important because if you've no loading, the float doesn't stay with the shot well. So you need a slight amount of loading. This has just got probably about a gram to a gram and a half in the float. So it sits right on the bolt when casting. Again, the shots must be tight together and I don't like to use more than three or four shots in the bulk. If you have too, too big a line of shot, again, this can tangle. So just three or four shots is ideal for the bolt, no more. At the bottom of the float, I've got a Drennan rubber swivel adapter. And this, because it's a swivel, it allows the float to move, but it also sits right nice on the bolt so it doesn't split away. Above that then, I've got the stop knot. If I can just untangle it from around the rod. Right, the stop knot, is where the float slides up to. If I can just take hold of the float and just pull it up to the stop knot. What I've got, because I've got quite a big swivel uh, on the swivel adapter at the bottom of the float, above it I've got a bead that slides up to the knot. You can actually nip the swivel up, but I found that it's better to fish with a slightly bigger swivel and use a bead because the float runs better on the line. A few years ago I used to shut the swivel up with a pair of pliers but I found that sometimes it trapped on the line so it's better to use the open swivel and then a bead running up to the stop knot so it hits that stop knot. The float I'm using is a four swan size float and as I've said it's slightly loaded in the bottom as well. I've got two stop knots on the line so that they stay in place. It's impossible for them knots to move when the float hits it. 
So that's just the equipment that I'm using. I'm using a, a 4000 size Shimano reel. It's uh, a reel that I use for this type of fishing. I think the 4000 size just allows you to wind in easier with the bigger floats. And of course, with the wider spool, it casts very well when you're using quite thick line. Casting a slider is where most people get it wrong. If you're used to casting by swinging a float around your head to cast, this is not, not correct for a slider and can cause tangles. What you need to do is let the float pass the rod and then bend the rod through it. So I'll show you how to cast. By casting in this way, by letting the float come past the rod and compressing the rod, everything keeps tight with the float. You don't bounce the float off the weight. If you cast swinging the float around, the float can bounce away from the lead itself and that's when you get a tangle around the bulk. So by keeping everything true and smooth, casting smoothly, you never get a tangle. I think I've probably fished for two hours today and not had a single tangle. So just rigging up properly and casting well is not a problem to fish with a slider tangle free. When you're fishing up for skimmers with a, a slider, I think it's most important to use a plummet on the hook to plumb up. Some anglers use olivets instead of shot for the bulk but the problem with this for me is that you cannot remove the olivet from the line. I can actually remove these anchor shot which are not not the lead type shot they're the tin type shot that were allowed in England and once you remove the shot off the line you can add a, a plummet down onto the hook and the float then is vastly undershotted so once the plummet lands on the floor the float slides up the line, you can set it, because it's so undershotted, you can set the depth absolutely perfect at the distance that you're fishing. So all I do, I cast the plummet rather than casting the float then. So you cast out to where you're fishing. Once the, the plummet lands on the bottom, the float will sink and then comes back up and because it's vastly undershotted you can see that the floats lifted up probably about close to 8 to 10 inch up above the surface. Now that's obviously wedged against the stop knot so you can tell that now I, if I actually put the shot back on you'd be fishing 8 to 10 inch over depth which is a little bit too much for skimmers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in and just trim a little bit of depth off that and then recast to make sure that I'm at the right depth. If I'm fishing for skimmers, I only want to be sort of 3 inch, 4 inch on the bottom. So by just trimming off that amount of depth, I should now be set almost perfect. So again, I'm casting the the plummet instead of casting the float. So I'm travelling back out to where I'm fishing. The float then comes again up to the stop knot. You can see that the float now is about sort of about four inch above the surface. So even that now I could just trim maybe an inch off and I reckon I'd be perfect depth. I'd be about sort of two and a half, three inch on the bottom. It's a great way to plumb up and you know that everything's super accurate. When I'm fishing at Poolsbrook today, there's quite a, a nice flat bottom. So it, it doesn't matter whether you're right on top of your bait or just away from your bait. Because the bottom's flat, you're all us at that depth. So I'm just going to take off another, another, another inch or two. And I now know that I'm set at right depth to catch skimmers just about so to two two and a half inch on the bottom it's just a case then of the removing the plummet and because anchor shot you can use again and again and again i can just put this back on the line 
and you're ready to fish. When I'm fishing a sliding float, there's a simple way to feed ground bait at distance. I have three catapults that I use. I have each catapult is set up for a certain distance. Today I've fished at 40 turns of the reel. So I've cast out to 45 turns and then drawn back to 40 turns. And what I have is a catapult that once the ball of ground bait is made the same size, I make my balls of ground bait hand shape and the same, exactly the same size that fits the, the pouch on the catapult. Each time I pull that catapult back full stretch, that ball of ground bait will go the same distance. So when that catapult's locked out, the ball of ground bait travels 40 turns. And what I've done, I've got a, a different shorter elastic on the 30 turn one a slightly lighter elastic that again once that's maxed out it'll go 30 turns the same for 50 turns a thicker elastic stronger elastic and again once that's pulled to its maximum the ball travels 50 turns so I've got them three catapults and all I've done I've duplicated them in case you break one on the bank so each time I can select the distance I want to fish depending on the wind and the tow and everything and I can pick a catapult to suit the distance that I'm fishing and you can make it look very simple with a little bit of practice today I've not practiced slider fishing for quite a while and I must admit I was a little bit rusty but once you've practiced you can get a ball of ground bait to land virtually on the top of each other every time with some concentration but just sticking to these rules of making the catapult once it's locked out at the distance fire the ball of ground bait the, the, the furthest you'll want to fish. There we are, that's the proof in the pudding. Fishing with just a simple mix of lake and lean and following the instructions that I've given you. Making a catch of skimmers like that can be easily done. Fishing on a, a nice lake on a nice day. Fishing with a slider. What a fantastic way to finish off. So there you have it folks, a lesson in slider fishing by probably the greatest angler ever to walk the surface of the planet. Next week we join Stuart Lister at the lovely Viaduct Fishery in Somerset. As he relives a recent match, we saw him qualify for the £50,000 Golden Reel Final. <laughs>